Hi guys and welcome to this video where we will be covering how to utilize work orders. There are chapters down in the description if you want to skip to a certain topic. Now let's get started. Let's first cover what a work order is. At the beginning of your fortress you may have noticed it can be a bit tedious to keep making chairs, chests, drinks in the workshops. Not being able to quickly make more of them when you need them. This is where the manager and his work orders come in. He will take the job of creating the tasks in workshops so we don't need to manually add them anymore. He will do this by checking the list of orders, starting at the top, and checking if their conditions are met. To get started with work orders, we first need to assign ourselves a manager in the noble screen. He will need a meager office so a chair on a table are just fine. The manager needs his office to be able to check on orders, so make sure you have built him one. Once you have done that, you are able to go to the work order screen by pressing O or going to the checkmark list in the bottom left. Your screen will probably be empty, but mine is already full of all sorts of different tasks I don't need to manage anymore. We will cover some of these in a later chapter in the video. So now that we know how to unlock the manager, let's go over the different kinds of orders we can make. To begin with, we just have simple orders. These are one-time jobs that you can easily put in and forget about. These are often used to just quickly make stuff you don't need a lot of. I use these kind of orders for stuff like chains or shields or even training weapons for my barracks. So let's compare why you would want to make use of a manager in this case. If you would want to make 10 chains, you would need to go to the smith, create a task, select a material and repeat the process 10 times. With the manager, we create a new order search for the right material of chain, and then adjust the amount to be made. Apart from the fact you don't need to go to the repetitive task of creating the same job in a workshop, work orders can also make use of multiple workshops, basically making the task twice as fast if you have two workshops dividing the work. This can also be managed to limit the amount of workshop that can work on a specific task at the same time. This of course isn't the only benefit. Since work orders also won't be cancelled and removed if they aren't able to do that task at the moment, unlike a workshop task which gets cancelled once they are unable to do it. This will always make sure they try to do the job again instead of just cancelling it and forgetting about it. The last benefit from work orders is that they aren't necessarily limited. They are limited to creating 9999 items at the time, while a workshop is limited to 10 items. So now we know how to make one-time orders. Let's talk about repeating orders and conditions. Repeating orders will restart when completed, so basically the same as setting a job in a workshop to be repeating. The benefit of doing this in a work order is that we can specify an interval for when this needs to start repeating. This can be either daily, monthly, seasonal or yearly. So let's for instance say we kind of know we lose 4 dwarves a year. We can then say in a work order create 4 coffins and repeat this yearly. So now our manager will check each year if he made the 4 coffins. If this is not the case, he will make a one time order at the available workshops and then set the task aside for next year. Now let's say we got a bit better at keeping our dwarves alive, so we just want to make sure we have enough coffins in stock and not just mindlessly make them each year and waste precious stone or wood. We can do this with conditions. There are a lot of different options within conditions, starting with inequality. This will change the way we check for items. We have a different range of options, some more useful than others. Most of the time you will be using the available is less than option, since we want to check if we are low on something and then make it so we never run out. Let's dive a bit deeper into the other options. First off we have the option to specify a type of item we want to check on. For most orders you won't be changing this, but you would need to change this if the item you want to check on is different than the item you are creating. So as an example. I want to make cloth, but I don't want to use all my thread. So I would start with adding a work order, weave thread into cloth. Then we will change the conditions to check for available thread. By default the game just tells you items to count and not the thread, so we would need to change this in the type menu by searching for thread. Now the only thing we need to decide is how much thread we want to have in stock. 
Let's say we want to keep 40 thread in stock and make 10 cloth. We would need to make sure we have 50 thread to begin this order since we will be using 10 to make the cloth. Next to the type we can choose the material. This can be useful if we want to check on specific kind of items. So instead of just looking for cloth, we can look for pigtail cloth. The last option we have for changing the items will be the adjective for the item we are checking. This one is a bit harder to use since you need to know a bit more about the game to learn what adjectives certain items can use. If we for example would like to use unrotten plants, we are able to specify this with the adjective option. In the upper right corner we have the last three options available. These are like dependencies. The first one we can use to change the time between checks. This can be daily, monthly, seasonal or yearly. Next we can add another item to check before we can start the job. And as last option we can link another work order. We will cover the examples of these options in the last part of the video where I will show you some work orders I like to use. Before we get into some examples of work orders, let's finish up covering the options in the work order screen. We've already talked about the amount of workshops that can be assigned to a job, what items we want to make and how to add conditions. The arrows next to the minus button will allow us to change the priorities of each job. These exist because a dwarf actively has to go over each order and check if it needs to be executed or not. Going over these orders takes time, so put the important ones at the top so you're sure they get checked first. I would advise to not give your manager too many other jobs. To the most left we can see a status box. Here we can see if the order is ready, checking or inactive. Ready means it will be executed once the manager is back in the office checking orders. Checking means it's waiting for its conditions to be met. Active means the jobs have been pushed to the workshops and are currently being processed. As last option we have the magnifying glass. This will be useful if we want to specify the material an item needs to be made of. Let's for example say Euros make drinks a lot, likes andesite. So we could make him some andesite specific mugs so he loves drinking even more. This works for most jobs that don't specify the material in the order itself. So it works on make rock tables, but it won't work on forge silver warhammers since a material already has been specified. Now that we know what we are capable of doing, let's go over some examples. I do want to note that most of these can be customized to your liking depending on how you prefer your fort to run. These are just my work orders that I'm sharing, so if you prefer to check every little condition before starting a work order, or none at all, the choice is yours. The first order I always make are for drinks and for prepared meals. Since I don't trust myself enough to keep an eye on these, I prefer to let the manager do it. I start off with brewing drinks from fruits when my stock of drinks is below 35. I start off with fruit first since this will ensure that I have some variety in drinks for my dwarves. I like to add a check for our empty food storage to prevent the spam of cancellation announcements because I don't have enough barrels. Same goes for the first rule which will check on the amount of usable fruits I have. You don't necessarily need these kinds of checks but this keeps the announcement window a bit tidier. Then I'll make a second order to make drinks with a lower check condition of 30 drinks and to only brew from plants. Apart from the first rule, the other two are the same to prevent clutter except we check for unrodden plants instead of fruits. We set the lower check condition here so that we will start with brewing fruits first since we already started producing drinks in that order from when we have 35 drinks. The next work order will be for fruit. This could either be easy, fine or lavish meals depending on how far you are in the game. First make a order to prepare meals. Depending on the size of your fortress you should change the amount according to the amount of dwarves you have and double that. This way they at least get two final meals if production should ever stop. Then we will add conditions to it. First we add unrotten cookable solid items. We specify solid since we don't want to use our drinks for calculating our food stock. We just want plants, meats and fish. This is again a condition to prevent announcement spam, so you can leave this if you don't mind. Or if you want to save some solid foods for some reason, you can leave it in. The last condition we will add to this is the amount of unrotten prepared meals we currently have. 
This just makes sure we don't ma mass produce all our food at once, but spread it out a bit. The next one I will show you will cover a lot of different items, since they are all just simple checks. I like to have some beds, tables, chairs and doors in stock, so that if I ever need to expand my fortress, I have the materials. Same goes for ammo, weapons, armor and all other furniture. We start by adding the item we would like to keep in stock. Let's for example take wooden bolts. We then want to add a condition to start a job if the amount available is less than 20. This would be the same for beds, chests and all the other items that are frequently used while expanding your fortress. The last example I want to give you guys is that of a clothing production. This one is a bit more complicated but should take a lot of micromanaging out of it. To start with we need to have wool, hair or plant to make into thread. This we can do by making a work order to check monthly or seasonally, depending on how many animals you have, if an animal can be shared. This will give us the wool we need to make thread. Next make a new work order to process the plants. We want to make sure we always leave some in stock, so we set it to process plants if our stock is greater than 40. We also limit this by checking the amount of plant cloth we have. We set it to 15 since we aren't that big of a forge yet. Now we can make a new work order that only checks the available amount of cloth we have. No matter what kind, and if you are below it, weave some new. So, now that we have a way to create cloth automatically in the background, we set up a clothing order to finish it up. We just want to check that we leave some cloth in stock, so when we have more than 20 cloth laying around, we can produce some loin cloths. Here are some final tips that are useful to know. You are able to tell which jobs are made by a work order by the little checkmark icon in the job list. There are some ways to make a repeating order if you use conditions wrong, so always make sure to check your inequality. Important tasks first, since priority matters. You can accomplish a lot with simple work orders, don't feel the need to make things too complex. Always try to use the suggested work order conditions to save some clicks. The wiki, reddit and forums are great resources for other work orders people made. These are linked down in the description. I hope that with this guide and the examples you are able to make your own complex orders to advance your fortress even further. Don't be afraid to check the adjective or the type list to learn more about its capabilities. Hey guys, this is me just rambling a bit at the end of the video. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed and liked the videos. And uh, there's been a lot of positivity, which I really am amazed about. So thanks for your support. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and hope to see you next one.